cheap. So let's start with that. Is it the one that tastes like chocolate? Yes. That's okay. what they, people say it does. And I tasted it, I wasn't sure it tasted it. I haven't eaten chocolate in years. Though. Number two. HH1. Hot, that's that's the life one. High zymes is what you're talking about, the enzymes? Yeah. Enzymes are extremely important for people. Uh, they are the mechanism that creates human life. When a sperm and an egg comes together, it's an enzyme activity that literally sparks human life. Now, Nielsen, 35 years ago, literally photographed. He went into women's bodies with microscopic cameras and watched, I, God knows how many years it took or months it took to do this, watched when the sperm hit the egg and you actually see the electrical storm happen through the enzyme activity. Ironically, when we croak, what is it that breaks our body back down to the soil again? Enzymes. So it gives life, takes life, it's a continuum. It's the electrical charge that pulsates life as we know it on a biological basis. And with that said, it also, in the case of HHI, is digestive enzymes. There's systemic enzymes and proteatic enzymes that do one thing, and then you have digestive enzymes. Hal was the leading authority in the world's history, Dr. Edwin Hal, on enzymes. And what he told us way back in the 1930s is that when we were born healthy, that precludes most of us, we had all the enzymes in our body necessary to digest food for 200 years. Providing we eat food with enzymes. And how many of us ate food with enzymes in it? My children. <laughs> that was it. I don't know too many other people. But the, the fact of the matter is, since we didn't eat enzyme-rich food, living food, plant-based food, our body lost the ability to interact with that food. Because half the enzymes necessary to digest are from food, the other half are from the body. And so now we've lost the ability enzymatically to digest food. So when you first start any diet, you basically should be eating enzymes to help you to digest the food. Number two, I don't need it for that anymore. I take 20 a day for anti-aging. And why I do that, it's a way to increase the electromagnetic frequency in and around the cell. Now, I don't want to get elaborate on this, but basically, when you get sick, you don't get sick from doing dumb things. The dumb things give you free radicals. Smoking cigarettes, eating meat, being lazy, not exercising, being negative do not directly kill you. They give you free radicals, which are, as my friend said one time when we were filming him, Dr. Leonard Smith, who's a great southerner from this town, he said, he said, free radicals like putting fire in the body. It burns the hell out of everything good. <laughs> that's what it does. And this protects you. This is a fire. So if you put electrical shields around your cells, when these bombs come, the free radicals that are trying to kill you, you basically you basically can prevent that from happening. Okay, one last question on the supplements and we move on. Enzymes, I'm just sorry. Just, you're talking about enzymes. Yes. You're taking more than it not, has nothing to do with your meals. Nothing. No, just, I don't you take, take them. Just like I that. take them for anti-aging. You know, anti Only one what is the That's a good question. We She's saying that question. if you went to the lake and drank the algae, assumably you're getting 100%, well, you, not assumably, you would be getting 100% of the benefit. You flash froze it, we assume that you're getting probably 75 to 85%, depending upon how long it's been frozen. The algae. Now, by the way, if it's frozen for 10 years, you're probably getting 2%. We're talking about average consumption time, six months, whatever it may be. You're taking body, you're probably getting 65 to 70 percent. So is it a Oh, yeah, it's extraordinary. Yeah. We wouldn't have it. It's, not. Yeah. it's effective. See, we do clinical research. We're, we're the only organization that I know of in the world in history with natural living that do clinical research on human beings. Remember, when you come in, we do blood tests. When you leave, we do blood tests. For the rest of your life, you send us blood tests. What do you think we're doing with all that? Just pissing it around? We're looking at all of that stuff and saying, hey, wow, look at this. Here's Mary who had brain cancer in 1992, and she's completely well now. But watch what Mary, Mary's uh, blood is like. Anna's in the middle of a research with Washington University on cholesterol drop. We're putting together a study for NIH at this point. And so we're in the process of these things. So, by the way, we know clearly why these things work and how they work. And boy, I tell you. When I started with my, you weren't here, but I started this with my children, and then I came in and did it with the guest for a year and a half. My mind was blown how effective this stuff is. I work, there's not a supplement we would ever suggest for you that doesn't work. 
But some of them work like, whoa, and some of them work like, whoa. <laughs> this is like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, I can't believe it. Now what we're going to do is stay organized and go around the room, let everyone ask a question. We'll start in the back of the room, work our way forward, and please be very quiet and listen. If the newcomers come in and start raising their hand and I don't answer, I don't uh, pick them, tell them, wait, they'll come in line. Because I'm not going to run around and be sporadic because there's always manipulators who take all the time and then you don't get your question asked. Way in the back, do you have any questions? Okay. Here in the... Yes. Yeah, you said any question. So then that, and, no, no, not on that. You know, the, you know, the, there's a new push now for uh, hybrid cars. Right. What's the research on that for the uh, electromagnetic? Big bit. It's about two and a half to three and a half times, depending upon the car, more dangerous than the average car. Let me put it in perspective. When I brought Gauss meters into about 58 cars I've rented, different kind, I shouldn't say they're all different kind, that's a lot. Many were the same, but probably 40 different cars I tested, type of cars. On the, on the dashboard, um, I always got a 6 or a 7. Now let me put that in perspective. My wife's country is Sweden that tells the citizenship the truth. They said if you have a 1, you double your chances of breast cancer. And we're talking about every dashboard of 40 cars I've tested, different cars, European cars, American cars, you know, Japanese cars, there were 6 and 7. So you can add those numbers on This is two and a half to three and a half times higher in electromagnetic frequency. What you can do, though, is put the same things you're putting on your electromagnetic equipment, your cell phone, your iPods, you know, the, the BioPro, put two of them on the dashboard, one the driver, one the passenger, and one in the very center of the back over the batteries. And that will dramatically reduce it, a physicist out west on that. And so, they have a new car, I guess, coming out, Chevy, last year, just to show you the sleazeball all of these people are. That's going to get 250 miles a gallon. Can you read about that? No. It's called, it starts with a V. And so, like my friend said to me, oh, they didn't have this already? Of course they did. Just now they're ready to sell it. They're going to sell it for like $40,000, so that takes away 75% of the population can't afford it. So wouldn't it be better if they sold it for $10,000? made a slight profit, and everyone could afford it, and then instantaneously we make an impact on global warming. Right now, the, I'm part of a, a group called uh, Concerned Scientists. They've been talking for 30 years. These are Nobel laureate levels of scientists, the, the leaders of this group. Basically saying, we don't dramatically change like 40% of what we're doing now. We have to eliminate 40%. We're going to be in major shit. And this is going to be like big time problems now. So watch with this stuff. Also, hybrid cars, which I've read in two different sources, create more pollutants and toxins than do the other cars. I'm not saying they're a bad idea. I'd much rather see less gas. But in the production of, this, of the batteries, it's more polluting than the normal car. So it's almost better to say today, uh, logistically, it's better to say, I'd rather buy a car that got 35 miles from Japan that wasn't a hybrid that produced more crop until they refined hybridization of cars. That's probably really the legitimate thing to do.